judge in all San Francisco who'd put your uncle away. Now, I never said anything about putting him away. Well, Winston. declared incompetent, it's the same thing. You can't hang a man for going around restoring old mansions. It's only a hobby. A hobby? $100,000 on this single house. You call that a hobby? Listen here, Braystone. Five years ago, I could look forward to inheriting a million dollars. Now it's down to 400,000. If he lives another five years... <laughs> Skid Row for you, eh, Tunderfer? They made him stop drinking and look what happened. Old houses. Say, how about the fact that he pays all of his bills in cash? $50,000 to one contractor. Isn't that crazy? Now listen. There are only two things to do with your uncle. Either kill him or cure him. And I've decided to cure him. I've sent him to a psychologist. If you let him start drinking again, he'd be dead in a month. Psychologist? Three weeks ago. That's why I asked you to come in. I'm getting the report this morning. That might be it now. Who? Oh, Dr. Marvin. <laughs> Put him right on. That's him now. Dr. Marvin? Yeah. You have? Total cure, eh? <laughs> no more old houses, eh? Now, you guarantee that. Well, you'll send us the details along with your bill. Oh, now, of course you'll be paid. <laughs> Total cure. Just jostled up his brains a little bit, and out came a new man. Remarkable fellow, this Marvin. The total cure. That's what the man said. Well, there you are. Your troubles are over. You won't have to murder the old boy after all. I resent that, Braystone. I never had any intention of murdering my uncle. An uncle and a nephew. No thought of murder? <laughs> Impossible. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, of this sinister relationship once again? Uncles and nephews. What a trail of blood and evil they have drawn across all the time of which we have any record. Think of the histories you've read, the books, the tales, the legends. Hamlet and his uncle Claudius. Richard III, the crookback putting his two little nephews to death in the Tower of London. Evil uncles, good nephews. Evil nephews and good uncles. What deadly poison lurks here. And how strange that even to this day, this relationship has not drawn the attention that it deserves. Our story tonight will tread this trail but with turns and twists and such sudden byways that even my head reels. And for a moment, but only for a moment, I cannot even be sure if my name is Boris Karloff. And the murder weapon? Well, I can assure you that it cannot be found in this cheerful assortment of conventional, but nonetheless effective playthings. The title of our story is Cousin Tundifer, and our players are Edward Andrews, Sue Ann Langdon, Vaughan Taylor, Howard McNear, Dayton Lummis, and Chet Stratton. So join me now while the uncle and the nephew in our story 
buy in a contest of murder such as you have never even imagined. Oh, please don't be nervous. This little toy isn't really loaded. Cleaning out, you mean. Or rather, I might say, a big cleaning out. Well, my uncle will be here tomorrow with a final payment. $50,000. Cash again? Do I hear an objection? You hear no objection. Now, well, let's go inside and see what happened to that $100,000, Mr. Pathastroy. What are the nails made of? Platinum? <laughs> Pretty nearly, Mr. Tenderfer. Pretty nearly. <laughs> Humor aside, Mr. Tenderfer. And I like a little lab as well as an egg. <laughs> well, this is where your money went. See, this is hand carved in 1850. We got it from an old house. And the nails, every nail, 1850. We pulled them out, we straightened them, we cleaned them, and we burned them. This house is just what it was the day it was built. Not a sixteenth of an inch off. This is the most perfect job that I have ever done. Ah, oh, just ponder on it. A hundred years. Roll away the curtains. Dispel the fog of time. Recreate a bygone era. What's a hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Tunderford, when you're healed grinds and pounds on a floor that belongs to another age? I take it you like this kind of work. Like it? It's my life, Mr. Tunderford. Well, then I've got some interesting news for you, Mr. Pesastroy. Your life is in danger. My uncle will rebuild no more of these old houses on the advice of a psychologist. No more, but we've got another one already in mind. He promised. Oh, uh, you'll just have to find yourself another fish, Mr. Pesastroy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to take a closer look at this uh, swindle without your sales talk.
Mr. Tenderfer! No time, no time. This is going to be trouble. You know what I think? It's a definite case of teleportation. Oh, no, I... I just... Teleportation? Sure. Movement in time. I saw this program on TV the other night about two guys who were carried back to the Stone Age. Oh, but this was only 1890. Well, it doesn't make any difference. All you need is a time machine. Not with me. All I did was blink my eyes, and there it was. Rococo. What'd you have for lunch? Skim milk and a pepsin tablet. Why? Well, uh, maybe it was a nightmare. A nightmare? It, well, I was wide awake. You know what I think I better do? I think I better go back there and take another look. flowers come from? You ordered them, Mr. Tundifer. I never ordered any flowers. Throw them in the fire. Why would I order flowers? I, I can't stand the smell of them. Where's my nephew? Who's that? I'll see. Oh, a flower. Oh, <laughs> yeah, a flower. <laughs> Where are you going? I, I, I was going to go upstairs and lie down, Uncle. I had a very disturbing experience today. Come in here. What? What are all these flowers for? I ordered them. That's what they're for. Sit down. I've got some news for you. Yes, I know. I heard. I spoke to Braystone this morning. Braystone, the lawyer? Do you know the man? I've been dealing with him for 23 years, Uncle. He says that you're not going to redo any more old houses. How did he know? Then it's true, isn't it? Uh, I had a, a long talk today with a fella downtown. A uh, uh, si uh, uh, 
psychologist? Hmm. Mad as a hatter. He said the reason I was going around restoring old houses was what I was really trying to do was to restore myself. <laughs> well, maybe he's right. You know, when I'm in those old houses, uh, it does make me feel young again. Well, you uh, must admit it's uh, an interesting idea, Uncle. These psychologists can see the truth of things. Could be. He told me that the real way to restore myself was to, to find a lively young filly and, and get married. Married? Mm. I took him by the collar and I said, my friend, you're completely mad. And as soon as I get out of here, I'm going to have you locked up. Where would I find a lively young filly at my age? Yes, that, that's right. Where, where would you, Uncle? What do you know about it? There was one right there in his waiting room. Oh, you should have seen her. Uh, intelligent. Uh, brainy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wish I could remember her name. Ah. Oh. Now, I wouldn't worry about it, Uncle. It's not very important. Not very important? Well, it's the most important thing in the world. What do you think all these flowers are for? She's coming here tonight. Here? There's a young woman here to see you. Oh, show her in. Pontifex, darling! <laughs> <laughs> I just can't resist a sweet, white-haired old man. Oh, <laughs> Queenie Delight. Who's that? Oh, that's just that worthless nephew of mine I told you about. He's been hanging around here for years. We'll get rid of him as soon as we get married. Oh. <laughs> but don't worry about him now. Let's, let's just sit down and have a nice, quiet dinner. You like salt-free food, baby? Oh! <laughs> Are those works of art, dear? No, no, no. No, baby doll. Those are my ancestors. <laughs> hey, you see that one there? Spitting image. <laughs> That's great, great Uncle Egmont. Can't tell them apart. He was a murderer. You mean he killed people? Mm -hmm. The vigilantes hung him right down there on Montgomery Street a hundred years ago. Same face. <laughs> I can just see him there, swinging in the breeze. Time for your heat treatments, Mr. Tundifer. Heat treatments? No more heat treatments, Nursey. From now on, I'm treating myself. <laughs> Be young again. I'm going backwards in time. You hear that, Miles? I'm going backwards in time. Yes, Uncle, I suppose you are. Perhaps even further back than you suspect. <laughs> How would 1890 do? Why is he here so hurt? This is trouble. Well, we got two sets of books, haven't we? What's two sets of books when you're dealing with screwballs? Oh, good morning, good morning, Mr. Tunderfer. <laughs> Up bright and early. Yes, indeed. I made a, a special point of coming down here to apologize to you. Uh, apologize to me? What for, Mr. Tunderfer? Oh, come now, Mr. Passas Troy, let's call a spade a spade. I dropped a word or two yesterday that I now regret very much. 
The truth is, I was thinking about something else, and I'm afraid I allowed you to be the target. Well, I didn't notice a thing. You were the... Oh, no, 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 Mr. Pathastroy. You see, the truth is that I was having a rather bad day. I, a little uh, dyspepsia, uh, you, know, you know. Matter of fact, I didn't even get a chance to uh, look at the house. Oh, well, there she is. <laughs> All you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Pisastroy, I'd like you to come inside and point out some of the more subtle features to it. Well, by all means, Mr. Tenderford, by all means. But just a moment. Listen, he wants me to go inside there and show him around. And we better be careful. This guy's as phony as a $3 bill. So leave me in there for two minutes. You get that? Just two minutes in the yell for me. Get me out of there before he finds something. So... Ah, well, now, after you, Mr. Tenderford. Oh, no, no, no. After you, Mr. Pisastroy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh, oh, this is the window seat here. Time to fit. Uh. Mr. Pisastro, you want it on the phone. Oh, excuse me, but I'll, I'll be right back. $50,000, eh, Mr. Pisastroy? <laughs> well, we try to do a good job. Uh-oh. Yeah, something the matter? Yes, my attache case. I left it inside. Oh, get it for him, Joe. Sure. It's on the window seat, Joe. Right. Nothing of value in it, but still very important to me. I put it right down. Uh, now, I wonder. You know, I had better go and take a look myself. Cousin Tandifer has been dead for 40 years. I was right there myself when they hung him on Montgomery Street. 
Then who was that? A man, a person, somebody who wandered in by mistake. Come. Now, let's see. Naked in Dodge City. How I made two million dollars by marrying an heiress. Thirty-three ways to get away with murder. New hair in 90 days. You like reading? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I love uh, uh, literature. Blunt Instruments, page 22. 22. Ah, oh, there we are. Blunt Instrument and or bludgeon murder. Now, care must be taken that the victim's head be bare during the operation. The, Operation. Oh. Even a soft cloth cap or a woman's handkerchief has been known to dull a blow sufficiently to prevent fatal injury. Oh, is that so? The occiput or top of the skull is. Miles! Uh, yes, uh, yes, Uncle? Where have you been all morning? I've got things to do. I'm sorry, Uncle. I, I, I was tied up. Um, the contractor's waiting for his money, you know. Well, it's all ready. Fifty thousand dollars. That's the last time I make a deal like that. Must have been out of my mind to make it in the first place. Well, a deal's a deal, I guess. Come for your money, huh? Well, you don't get a nickel until I've looked the place over. Well, of course, Mr. Thunderbird, of course. <laughs> Not a nickel until I've seen it. Take off your hat, Uncle. Take off my hat? What for? Out of reverence to the past. <laughs> inform you that your poor nephew is now worth approximately four hundred thousand dollars American now that's not to be confused with the worthless variety once used on the Chinese mainland Dee -dee. Ah. identification Pontifex Tundifer deceased let me see the book says destroy all identifying objects and we will go by the book. Ah, there, uh oh. <laughs> Slight oversight. How could I have forgotten 50,000 simoleons? 
How could I have forgotten that? <sighs> Dear Uncle Potifex, will hang on to this for me. <laughs> I tell you, your cousin Tundifer has been dead for 40 years. Well, you said he wanted to see the attic. I'm sure he was taking a lot of time. <laughs> What's a little time, uh, Mr. Passas Troy, for a sum of money like that? Eh? Drag that lieutenant till he's not in there. But he's got to be in there. We've been over with the microscope, stairwells, chimneys. We even looked in the window seat. He's not in there. I tell you, he never left the place. Nobody saw him go out the back way, and we've been right here in the front. We have got to throw out a dragnet, lieutenant. He might be wandering right around here somewhere. And lieutenant, he's got fifty thousand dollars on him in cash. Oh, they might knock him over the head and steal it. In his condition, he would be an easy prey for anybody. We've got to find him, Lieutenant. That is Mr. Passastroy's money. And as Mr. Passastroy says, he might be murdered into the bargain. And then Mr. Passastroy would have to sue the estate to get his money. And the estate would probably counter-sue. They would doubtless demand to examine the books. Lawyers would come into the case on both sides. Litigation would start. The whole thing could go on for years. And. Poor Mr. Passastroy might have to settle for as little as 10 cents on the dollar. Uh, well, uh, Joe, you get me my pills, please. We can't wait, Lieutenant. Throw out a dragnet. <laughs> well, there I was, the new will sitting right here waiting for his signature, when I got the word that poor Pontifex had cashed in his proxies. It certainly fooled me, Miles. I didn't think you could pull it off. Uh, pull what off, Braystone? Why, the perfect crime, Tundifer. We'll never see poor old Uncle Pontifex again. Well, I must admit it is a comforting thought, but that's not the purpose of this visit. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't. Well, pro forma, that's me. All business. Well, let's see. If he stays disappeared, and I'm doubling my bet, you can't claim the estate until he's been declared legally dead. That's five years. However, in the meantime, and until then, you may enjoy the usufruct of the estate. The usufruct? That's the interest on it. Pretty tidy sum, if you ask me. Just about 40 times more money than you've ever seen before. Anything else? Yes, I would like all the papers pertaining to the estate. Papers? What for? Because I'm going to turn this account over to another attorney. Another what? Another attorney. One who spends more time reading wills and less time reading minds. You mean marry me? Queenie, I have loved you since the minute I first saw your picture in front of the club apogee. That picture is not the real me. Oh, well, of course not. But it's real enough for a start. You know, <laughs> no wooden legs. Queenie, believe me, they're never going to find Uncle Pontifex. How long can you stay in mourning? It's been three days already. Don't rush me. Please, don't confuse me. It's, it's got to be an older man. I am an older man. I mean a real older man. They have wisdom and experience and philosophy. It, it has to be an older man. Don't ask me why. Don't confuse me. It's, uh, it's psychological. And, and they all have money. But I have money, dear. 
I have the inheritance and quite a sizable sum was stashed away. Oh. Where? Oh, in a window seat. Fifty thousand dollars. Give me your answer tonight. Tonight? Oh, I, I, I can't make it tonight. I'm still in mourning for Pontifex. With us, it was bingo, love at first sight. You, uh, you're like a boy. Somebody with an allowance. Fifty thousand. Just waiting to be squandered on rapturous, riotous living. Queenie, forget about my youthful appearance. Just try to think of it this way. The body is different, but the money is still the same. dollars gone maybe we could find another one where millionaires with one foot in the grave don't grow on trees why I listened to his pulse right here in this room he couldn't have lasted a month the way you live baby oh well when you have no luck what can you do nothing oh hey how about this nephew he's young <laughs> why do I ask with my luck I might have known It'd last for years. Oh, Marvie, baby, I'm gonna miss you. You're the only man I ever knew that I could be in a room with for hours and and just talk. Well, this is the end, baby. Well, what am I gonna do? Oh, well, why complain? If you have no luck, you have no luck. <sighs> Nothing's ever gone right for me. From the very beginning, in my childhood. No luck. You mean like a life pattern? Well, how far back do you remember? From the first day. Uh, right away, my father hated me. And then my mother liked my sister better than me. And, and right next door, there was this big black dog barking, barking, barking. Just one traumatic experience after another. I tell you, you could go crazy. Uh, how could anybody be lucky with a start like that? Well, there must have been something good. Nothing, believe me, absolutely nothing right from the very first moment. I, I tell you, the, the, the worst luck I ever had was being born. Oh. I want you to know that I'm still in mourning for Pontifex. Oh, Queenie, we're all in mourning. That's why I came here. I want to talk about him. You're his nephew. You must know all kinds of little things to tell me about him. I want to just sit here and listen. I want to remember this house. The way he looked the last time. White-haired, wise, rich. Tell me all the things about the way he was. Oh, how can you be sure that he's dead? That he won't just suddenly come back? Let's eat. Don't worry about Pontifex. He, uh, he's dead and gone. Robbed and murdered. But how can you be so sure? Yes, that's, uh, uh, you know. That's the murderer! Oh, well, that... 
That's what they say. because he let himself be caught. But there's another chapter to the story, Queenie. What's that? If a rich murderer were to be found out, at least a lot of loot would be sure to go to somebody. and roses. We're going to need a new car. Two new cars, baby doll, maybe three. Oh. <sighs> well, maybe I've been confusing old age with experience. <laughs> no, baby doll. The fact is, some things are even better if you're kind of young. Oh. <laughs> 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 That one. Wrap it up. And uh, those. Wrap them up. And. Wrap it up. Oh, Milesy! Now we'll be back in about 20 minutes with the cash. The window seat, huh? <laughs> my alabaster pestle, then threw him like a dead dog into the window seat. Now, now, lady. For three days, he lay there like a dead man. We fed him paragoric and hot tea and... He just come to five minutes ago. The whiskey did it. Whiskey? He's not supposed to have whiskey. It's against doctor's orders. Here, let me take it. Never mind. Where's my money? You mean this? What's going on? What's all this? This man is Egmont Thunderbolt. He tried to kill you. Arrest him. Now, 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 I, I'm not Egmont. I, I'm Miles Thunderfer. Here you are. Look, look for yourself. She's just off her rocker. Ah, uh, tricks, tricks. Don't believe a word he says. Keep your hand out of there, Sullivan. Oh, why won't anyone believe me? Don't I know my own cousin when I see him? Don't I know that foul face that murders? I, he killed eight men. Soothe yourself, lady, soothe yourself. 
That foul face. That murdering eye. There's nothing to worry about. He'll be going away to prison for a long time. Shut up, all of you. Miles, what is going on? We're back in 1890, Uncle. We've got to leave. We've got to get out of here. 1890? Yes. Just take a look through that door. I know it sounds crazy, but every Tunderfer who sets foot in this house walks right into 1890. Go ahead, take a look. <laughs> Sergeant, from the bottom of my heart. I'd never have lived it down if my neighbors had seen Cousin Tunderbuck going off to prison through my own front door. <laughs> Always ready to oblige, man. Some crazy going on. It's a crazy house. I'll have them start tearing it down tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>